So we did scale up at R&D and then we actually developed the manufacturing side. So the bill of materials to make it more Indian or make it more user friendly, to make it more cost effective. So that the whole process cost can come down because of the raw material cost. Whatever are the guidelines, so ICH guidelines, European guidelines, American guidelines. So welcome to Mr. Mandal to Pharma Now. Uh, I think we already started the interview before the session. <laughs> so I would really love to uh, understand you how you become a manufacturing man and how you become a, a manufacturing player for a renowned brand called PSQ. Okay, so I think I will have to start from the beginning. Uh, way back I uh, never had intentions to be in biology. It should be biotech. So uh, it was a family dream that I should become engineer. And I went to take admission in engineering, but I was late. So I took admission in microbiology, which was the next best line standing besides the engineering. And uh, that's how I was part of uh, microbiology. At that time, there was no biotechnology way back in 90. Uh, I passed out my master's in 96, so that was way back in 91. And uh, that's how the biology uh, journey started. I liked it and I thrived. And then I took my first, I actually wanted to do my PhD. And during the first few months, I realized that if I have to complete my PhD, then I will have to eventually go out because I got admission in CRI, Cancer Research Institute, TMC at that time. So uh, it was not possible to complete and the stipend they were offering was 2,500 versus the job that I got was offering me 6,500. So it was three times more the salary. So automatically I switched because that was the need of the time. And uh, my first job was at Merin Limited and uh, it was a Tata owned company at that time and we were doing uh, fermentation uh, of vitamin B12 using classical mutation and organisms like that. But the scale of operation was like 100,000 liters. So there were multiple bioreactors for that. And then uh, eventually uh, the company was taken over by Oakheart. And from there on, uh, the court primarily decided that they would be investing more in the land part of it and were not interested in the process. So, and at the same time, there was some competition coming in from China, so we were not the leaders anymore. And they decided to shut it off. And uh, I switched to USV. I remained in USV for two years. Again, I was in between R&D and tech transfer. So I was responsible for uh, taking their molecules to scale up into manufacturing. They did not have a manufacturing facility at that time. But the traveling from my place to that place was very tedious. So eventually, I got an opportunity with BSV in 2006. And I joined BSV as an R&D person. I think as a senior scientist or maybe assistant manager, I don't remember. So at that time, uh, the purpose was that we are supposed to take the molecules which are developed. And BSV had floated into biotech very recently, maybe 2003-2004. They had development and they had a lab in US. From the US, that used to come to India for process development. And then my job was to take the process development, scale it up and take it to manufacturing. But there was no manufacturing site again. So we did scale up at R&D and then we actually developed the manufacturing site based on my experience, earlier experiences handling higher volumes. Uh, we uh, forwarded into, we already, um, uh, BSV already had a manufacturing site at Ambarnat. So we made a new building at Ambarnat which was only dedicated to biotech manufacturing. I was part of the designing, I was part of the instrumentation of purchase it, selection process development, process transfer, and everything else. And uh, for many years, I kept in between, like my, both the legs, one was in R&D, one was in manufacturing. Uh, eventually, in 2019, I shifted completely to manufacturing. 
and that's how uh, now I'm responsible completely for all the molecules that BSV develops for biotech in uh, the company. Wow, that's, that's a bit taking journey, I, I must say. <coughs> so, being, a, I can say, a scale-up man, right? So, you're always uh, responsible for scaling up from R&D to production. So, what are the key challenges you always observe uh, when you scale up uh, to the production? So, the main thing is R&D is kind of, uh, or was, cash-rich. So, whatever they use in biotech especially is something which is like a catalog product. Open the catalog and order it. It may be VWR, it may be Sigma, it may be something which is best, which is available. Molecular biology, reagents or whatever. And once you come to manufacturing, those ingredients are actually not available at that large scale. Or it is not economical to use it because the importing etc. is very tedious. And there are certain chemicals where the life span is very small and uh, the material has to be shipped in very special conditions like minus 20 or something of that sort. So most of the times uh, it is really not possible. So my struggle was always to change this, we call it bomb, like bill of material, right? So the bill of material to make it more Indian or make it more user friendly, to make it more cost effective. So that the whole process cost can come down because of the raw material cost. So that was first challenge. Second would be the understanding of manufacturing, of how manufacturing works, how CGMP works, because R&D lacks into that CGMP concepts, and that's what manufacturing wants. And R&D, it's very easy to switch or twitch something which is going in the process, something is not going right, you change. But in manufacturing, you can't do that. There is a procedure to do that. And every change leads to some other change, so it is very difficult. So make, I, a good part was that I was understanding both the sides, and I became a bridge in between the two. That's very interesting. So you talk about CGMP. Okay, so it's a, it's a very interesting jargon. So I want you to understand what exactly CGMP is. In simple words, current good manufacturing practices. Current means it is always changing. So you keep on upgrading yourself to the latest whatever is available. Uh, it basically means more on the compliance side of it. If you are following a particular pathway of regulatory guidances, then whatever are the guidances, ICH guidelines, European guidelines, American guidelines, whatever market you are targeting, according to that, you have to follow the guidelines. The CGMP is more on the side of how you will manufacture the product according to that guideline norms. Why we do it? Obviously for patient safety. And that's the primary thing. So whatever is latest available in terms of equipments, in terms of processes, in terms of procedures, Everything has to be followed at every time. This keeps on updating, that's why it is current chain. Okay. So, how the CJP rating happens basically? So, is there any body, is there a regulatory affair? What exactly? Yes, uh, so like Indian uh, regulatory, like WHO and CDCO would do a pre audit before you start manufacturing whether your facility complies to all the norms which are written as per Schedule M. Uh, if you go to Europe, then they will have their own CGMP guidelines and then they will be coming and inspecting as per their requirements of whether we are following those, say for example, the environment which is there, the material that is being used. So all that needs to be like uh, clean, all that needs to be uh, deciphered as per pharmacological, everything needs to be tested before use and so and so, the procedure is that. So CGMP involves a lot of uh, things other than the process. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I think, so, I think I also heard about it. a lot of sustainability buzz is going around the manufacturing. So, uh, can we put some light to how you guys are uh, complying to the ESG goals? I think sustainability is something which the definition differs depending upon which sector you belong to. So, a sector is not in terms of pharma, but in the pharma, either you are the side of finance, either you are the side of sales manufacturing or R&D. So for a finance commerce, uh, commerce guy, sustainability means that the business continuity has to be there. So that is what I have to sustain. How do I sustain by doing cost cutting, by improving my yields or so and so. When it comes to manufacturing, then manufacturing normally thinks sustainability means I have to take care of the environment, the processes are so and so, how much water am I using, how much electricity am I using, what are the plastic waste that we are doing, what are the ETP, effluent things which are moving out. So that's how the definition keeps changing between sectors within the industry. So sustainability is, yes, definitely the way forward and that's the way it is. 
And the uh, good part is that even if you are a part of the MIDC area, then MIDC controls are also pretty high. For example, the amount of plastic that we use now has increased because more or less we are using everything is disposable, right? So when we talk about disposable plastic bags that we use at home, here also we are using plastic bags, right? They are used for single-use fermenters or single-use mixers, a lot of plastic. But the amount of plastic that we use and amount of plastic which we give out has to be matched. It has to be numbered. And then a certain number has to be committed to the municipality and then it can be done. So you cannot go wrong in that. It's a part of compliance now. Up to the, uh, Very interesting. So coming back to the uh, manufacturing part, in terms of technology, so what new innovations, technological innovations we are implementing in the manufacturing right now? Um, as I said, uh, part of sustainability, you have to use single use. Why single use? Because it is helping in terms of reducing the water usage and electricity usage definitely. If I have a process which is lasting for maybe 5 days, 10 days and I have to repeat that process, every time the process change happens, then you have to do the cleaning. But when you're using disposables, you don't have to do that part. So that is one. Automation is second. Manual intervention has to reduce so that the risk goes down. And automatically, when automation comes in, AI, ML, generative AI, everything also comes in together. We may be indirectly using it without knowing it, but it is there somewhere in the software. It is an interface for us where we just can see the graphical representation. But that usability and person uh, knowability is definitely increasing. It's a buzzword now. Everybody's talking about it. And of course, we are Googling it every time in Gemini and in ChatGPT. But definitely using it more and more on the process side also. There is another buzzword by industry from Quanto. Industry? For Quanto. Okay. So, of course, the integrated environment and the IoT and all those stuff. Right. That is your technology. So again, uh, it was always there because once we started using SCADA, once we started integrating machines, the machines started talking to each other, even if they are manufactured by two different companies and the software has to integrate and we have suppose a digital DMR. So all these things had to happen and IoT would be a part of it because sometimes even the servicing uh, has to be done online. Like the guys don't come, so we have to give them access to the systems. When your IT is rigid, okay, I will have my antivirus loaded in your software, but the, if the antivirus is there, my software doesn't work. So then there is always a war. So things, things are improving over there also. Yeah, sure, sure. That's, that's really interesting conversation. So uh, I really wanted to have a one piece of advice for the to the youngsters who wants to get into pharma manufacturing, who wants to get into pharma industry altogether. What is, would be that one piece of advice you would like to put? Uh, giving one piece is difficult because there are so many things. But definitely, I think more or less uh, what I see missing nowadays is integrity. Yes. So especially everybody has a mindset that I want to join a company and leave within maybe one and a half and two years. So if you come with that mindset, it's very difficult to teach and very difficult to learn. Um, so that integrity is definitely required.